It is a new day. I feel refreshed. Everything's good. I'm ready to tackle the crap out of this Watts link and actually finish it off. Yesterday was a little bit troublesome. You know, had a few things that went wrong, but after a time to relax, rethink, I got this. So starting out today, I noticed uh, yesterday the pivot link on that center axle bracket, uh, the difference between the width of the bushing and the width of the heim joints was a little bit different. So we have to take that center pivot and uh, break it so it comes in and then straightens back out. I went through already on Mastercam, I set everything up so I can figure out where my angles need to be. This is the bracket here itself, what angle it needs to sit at and where it's at, which 10 and a half degrees, a break in the opposite direction will actually center the heim joint link with the uh, pivot or the uh, bushing link that's in there and then my dimensions of where I want to put my brakes on there for clearance. So this is just quick and easy, tells me exactly where I need to go on it. And then after I set everything up, we're good. I have it correctly set on the distance that I need from the top down to the break point. Just make myself a little, little line there, just describe that. And then I'll go back and set the one for the, uh, the top there. So I need the inch and seven eighths from the top down here, which is one break, and then three and seven eighths from the other line, which is the other break, but those are on opposing sides so that you, when you break it upwards and then downwards, it'll actually come in where it's supposed to. Sounds confusing, but trust me, you'll see it all. Now, since we have a radius here and a radius here, and this width is different than the center width, we have to find a way to make a square line on here. So you notice it'll jump back and forth. I'm just gonna kind of cheat a little bit. I know that the difference between this width here and this width here is an eighth of an inch on both sides. So if I take a couple of these little Weld Metals Online coupons and just squeeze them in right there, that holds my spacing. And then I can take another coupon and square it off here. That way I can draw a line straight across right where it needs to be. Any straight edge will do. It's, you know, nothing real fancy. As long as it's a straight line and you can reference it when you put it in the brake, then you're good to go. That's all you need. Now when it goes into the brake, it's hard to see exactly where that lands, so I'm gonna extend these lines onto the side. That way I can see, usually I let this stuff dry, but I'm in a rush. I'm not supposed to be in a rush. I learned that lesson yesterday. Having that little extra time in the morning to set everything up so that way we know that we're gonna flow smoothly, that's what really changed it today. So that and of course that one time where I said I gotta not get ahead of myself because I was getting really excited, catching that moment and slowing myself down, that's what made this day go 10 times friggin' smoother. And should go that way every single day, but we'll always hope for that. <laughs> this here is the handy bin. It's part of the uh, universal fabricator from Shop Outfitters. This whole machine is a miracle to have, in all honesty. It's 100% USA made. It's worth every single penny that they charge for it. The whole thing just requires air to operate it, and that's it. The best part about it, whenever you want to set up your angle to find out where it needs to bend, you always base it off of the hydraulics deadheading, uh, and where they stop, that's the angle you get. So I've already got it set to 10 and a half degrees. I've already measured all that stuff out, so that way we have it, you know, just throw it in there. Throw in a piece of flat stock, just you know, set it up in there, bend it, measure it, make an adjustment, and off you go. When the hydraulics stop, there's your angle. That should do it. Do a real quick fit check here. Now, yesterday, this is something I should note, I was having troubles lining everything up inside of here, but you know, we measured it before we welded it and everything was good and we test fit it, but then when I put it back in, things were a little bit off. And that was actually a, a friendly reminder of, uh, from our, our buddy Distortion here, that <laughs> when we stuck it in there before we welded it and tacked it and everything fit, it might have only been in one direction. So when I put it in yesterday, it was actually in the opposite direction of where it stood before, and it actually looked a little crooked too, which was strange. So I took it out, I flipped it over, and it slid right in and everything lined up where it was. So just in case you ever run into a situation like that and you think the whole thing's destroyed, try it a different way. You never know. I know we look pretty close right now, but we'll just see. I'll toss that in there real quick. Toss this one in here. There we go. That's exactly what we needed to see right there. 
line all of this stuff up, check our measurements, and uh, figure out where the bars need to go. I haven't quite solved that problem yet because we don't really have a way to mount them over here. But in a few minutes, we'll figure that part out. I think what I'm going to do is just kind of get our, our tubes just roughly cut. You know, so I need about 16 inches or so on here, which means I need about 16 inches or so on the other side. So we'll just cut those off and uh, figure out where everything's going to land at. I need better visual. Now we always want it level at half travel. So that way when it goes up, it will start to arc. Now every single straight line, when you start turning it like this, that creates a radius. So it'll come around like that. So at half your travel, you want it flat. You want it straight. And that's the tricky part where a lot of people will kind of goof on a Watts link because you don't necessarily have like, let's say this chassis design here where I dropped my, my rear axle or my rear frame tubes low enough to where my four links were at half travel and all that. You don't always have that. In order for the Watts link to be effective, you have to have an equal and opposite reaction and they have to be virtually identical. So that's why we set it all up on a flat plane at half travel. And all of that's calculated. This is gonna be on airbags. So the total travel of the amount of bags, that's how we calculated half travel. So literally at halfway up here, if I do a line or I do a, a go straight across here, flat and level, which I just kind of get it in a ballpark, if you will. That'll tell me about where my tab needs to sit. Put it down on the bottom here. This is where we kind of run into a problem that it's a little bit below my frame. And we're also in a point in space here where there's absolutely nothing here. So we got to figure out how we're going to uh, design a bracket, maybe to come down into here or something along those lines. So may just be an extension of this frame that will maybe bend a tube or something and go up with it. Haven't really decided or haven't really figured that out yet, but you also want to have your link bars for the Watts link as long as possible because the longer the tube or the longer the line, if you will, the longer the radius. So the more gradual uh, movement it has. That's also the same thing with your four links. So if they're really short and stubby, your radius is going to be really short and it's going to want to be like a small circle every time it moves. I'm just kind of eyeballing this to about 90 degrees or so. Now here's the genius of this system, right? It's maxed out and normally you'd have to pull, reset, and do all kinds of other stuff, but if you hold the bar and retract, watch it come out of there. Boom! Locked up, ready to go again. You know, I'm gonna put the brake lines back in first. No point in guessing. I know that there's somewhere around a snowball's chance in hell that that line's gonna come off of wrenches, so it's pretty rusted. And if I destroy it, I'll just replace it. Now, Put this back in and keeping this in alignment here. I've got enough room for tabs. I don't know if I want to put a tab right on that bend there. I don't think I like that. In fact, I know I don't like that. I need an alternative solution. So while I think about that, you can let go of that. Thank you. I can definitely start working on this one. We'll get all this cut out on the fast cut and we'll get going. hand thread that would be this side so it goes in like a normal nut and bolt this one is a left hand thread noted by the little groove that's carved into it so when you turn it one way or the other it acts like a turnbuckle it will either spread out or 
compress or retract both the uh, high ends. That makes it a lot easier to adjust than having to take it off and then make an adjustment, put it back together. That's a pain in the butt. Right here, just this little last piece of it. I feel like I need a pair of tweezers. You got it. Nice little trick. You want to make sure your high misalignments don't fall out. Just max it out. And they'll keep them relatively in place. Now if we need to make an adjustment, just turn it this way or this way. That'll either spread it out or bring it back in. I'd like to have the exact same amount of threads coming out of there at once. And uh, if there's like if there's too many in here and too much out of here, I'll kind of extend this one and, and retract this one a little bit to measure it out, make sure that they're both equal and they're they're level. That's just a me thing. I mean, ideally you want the most amount of threads holding it in there, but you know, uh, just for the looks of it, even though people will probably never see it unless they really want to crawl underneath this thing. But you know, it's it, it's 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 good practice. Let's just put it that way. Good representation. dummy bushings back in one side than the other and then we'll yeah because that'll hold it in place a lot better I think I think that's what it'll do you know my wells don't always look nice and when they do I push my own like button Watch link, everything's back together. We are basically finished with the entire job on this one. Here's a quickie on exactly how it works. Because a lot of people get confused about the center pivot and what happens and why it's allowed to move when the rest of the chassis isn't. Well, think of it this way. If we have a force that's going this way on the tube, it's gonna to wanna to push the tube out in this direction. That means that this tube is gonna to wanna to pull in that direction, which since it's attached to the chassis on both sides, it will not allow it to move back and forth at all. It's basically stuck in there, right? But we don't want our axle to change any kind of uh, angle or anything else like that fore and aft. That's what the four legs do. They hold it all together. But we need all that travel in there. So while we can go up and down on it, the center of this, uh, the center of the pivot, which also represents the exact center of the axle, it will go up and down and these links and the center pivot will move in opposite directions, still keeping the same force from side to side, centering the axle. So we'll just kind of let it run down real quick. 
the axle right now is not centered. So uh, it's gonna look like one bar is probably gonna look a little bit more out of angle than the other bar. Uh, and that's just because the axle is actually not centered in there. I just threw it together. We can center it later. That's, you know, not worried about it right now. So let's take the stands out real quick. And this is uh, where it is at the lowest point. So if we lift up, see how the axle doesn't move, but the links do. And at any position, if I try to push or pull on it, the watts link won't let it shift from side to side. So to kind of reiterate, the four links hold the axle fore and aft, and they prevent it from tilting or rolling. The watts link holds everything from side to side. Now, as I put all of this in here, and if we uh, kind of look at the geometry and how I did everything on here, this exact setup is almost identical to the same performance, the same motion, and almost the same result as the factory leaf springs. If I changed angles or changed positions or anything else like that, the reverse four link might be a bad idea. But since it was carefully calculated, well, it's gonna work. And there's gonna be no problems. So with the watts link all finished up, we're good to go on that one. But the only problem that we have right now is that even though the suspension is set, the chassis is not. And we gotta fix that one which is gonna require a lot of bracing and a lot of gusseting. So that's what we're gonna tackle next.